Hey Creeps, it's Cameron again, and welcome back to Library Macabre, where I talk about books, movies, writing, and all things spooky. And today I'm going to be discussing my top 10 books that I read in 2020. In 2020, I read a total of 56 books, which is about average for me. I think the most that I've ever read in a year is 80 books, but typically it's around 50 to 70, somewhere in that range. So 56, it's not as much as I wanted to read originally, but it's what we got. It was 2020, it was a crazy year. And even if I didn't read quite as many books as I was hoping, I still read a lot of very, very good books. So I'm gonna be talking about those today. These are not the books that were published in 2020. These aren't the top 10 books of 2020. These are the top 10 that I read in 2020. Some of them are brand new. Some of them just came out this past year. Others are much older. So there's a little variety. Also, not every single one of these books are horror. I know, it's crazy, but I don't just read horror. I do read a variety of other genres. I just mostly review horror here on the channel, but I, I did read a bunch of other books and I do have some different genres mixed in. So the first ones I'm going to be talking about are the vintage titles that I read. The first one is The Midnight Club by Christopher Pike. Now, Christopher Pike is one of those authors from my youth. I read many, many Christopher Pike books when I was a kid. Mostly his books for younger kids, which was the Spooksville series, which was a little bit more Goosebumps. These books, his teen books, were more like Fear Street by R.L. Stein, but with a little bit more maturity in there. Christopher Pike's teen books, unlike R.L. Stein, featured a lot more in the way of death and suffering and existential dread. His books tend to be just very heavy and sad, and The Midnight Club is no exception. I did not read this one as a kid. I didn't read very many of his teen books other than his point horror books like Slumber Party and Weekend because honestly, most of his teen books just went right over my little head. And that's why I stuck to the Spooksville books. I'm really having fun going back and uh, hitting up the Christopher Pike books that I missed out on as a kid. So this was the one that I started with this year. The Midnight Club follows a group of teenagers who are slowly dying in a hospice. Each of them have different forms of illnesses, and that includes our main character, Alonka, who is suffering from a form of cancer. And to combat the loneliness and depression these kids feel, they often join together at midnight to tell each other spooky stories, or not always spooky stories, just dark stories about loss and death. They very much reminded me of the Midnight Society from Are You Afraid of the Dark? And according to the synopsis on the back of the book, these kids make a pact with one another that the first person to die will come back to the group and give them a sign in some way. A sign that shows that there really is life after death. And that, that does kind of happen, but the synopsis isn't exactly accurate. It makes you think, oh, well, this is kind of a ghost story. Like one of the kids is gonna die and they're gonna come back and haunt the other kids. That doesn't exactly happen. This isn't necessarily a ghost story. This isn't really a horror story at all. It's really about a bunch of kids who are dying in a hospice and uh, them trying to come to terms with it. And it's very emotional, very, very existential. And there's a lot of talk about uh, reincarnation and past lives that are sprinkled throughout. There was a lot in this that really stuck with me and really made me think. There were a lot of really great lines that I marked in the book just because uh, they really struck a chord with me. I loved this and I cannot wait for the Mike Flanagan TV show that's about to come on Netflix, I believe this fall. It's gonna be great. I can't wait to see what other Christopher Pike stories they choose to adapt. If you'd like to hear my thoughts just a little bit more in depth on The Midnight Club, I have a podcast episode that I was on recently for the Dustin Can Read podcast. That's not gonna be out for another week or so, but I will for sure update the graveyard down below when the link is available. But uh, yeah, I gave this five stars, loved it. And I've already started reading some other Christopher Pike books. So expect a Christopher Pike video very, very soon. Next, we have Deliver Us From Evil. This is by Alan Lee Harris. And I'm not gonna talk too in depth about this book because I did do a full review about it. I'm gonna link that up there 
and the card symbol if you want to go and watch it. This is a book that was published in the 80s. I believe it was 1988. Yeah, 1988. This is from Bantam Books. This was just recently reprinted by Capricorn Literary in paperback and as an audiobook. I listened to the audiobook and really, really enjoyed it. This is basically a small town coming of age story where an ancient evil is unleashed in the town and people start becoming victim to that. If you like Stephen King's It, uh, check this out. I think you're really going to dig this. Now be forewarned, this is a slow burn. So if you like your books uh, fast paced and bloody, this is not going to be for you. But this does have some genuinely chilling scenes that really got under my skin, unlike anything that I read this year. So it's got the scares. Next, we're getting into the new releases that I read in 2020. And this is another one that I'm not going to talk too in depth about because I am going to do a full video review about this. That is Kill River 3 by Cameron Rubik. Another reason why I don't want to talk about this in depth is because it is uh, the third book in a trilogy and I don't want to give anything away, but I do have reviews of the first and second book. I'll post those up there in the card symbol if you want to check them out. Uh, Cameron Rubik is the modern master of slasher horror, in my opinion. He is a great writer. He really knows how to capture that 80s spirit. And if you want your books fast paced and bloody and also full of heart, Cameron Rubik will have you set up. And Kill River 3, not a disappointment. This was a great way to wrap up the trilogy. And I'm really hoping that he continues on. I believe that there are some other things in the works involving Kill River. Not that this wasn't a great way to wrap up the series, but I just, I want more, you know? Next is Secret Santa by Andrew Schaefer. This was published by Quirk Books in 2020. Again, I've already talked about this on the channel. I did a Christmas horror recommendation video and that was featured in that video. So I will also link that up above if you wanna check it out. Bottom line, I love this. It takes place at Christmas time in the 80s. It's all about the horror publishing boom of the 1980s. And it just took my love of vintage horror and ran with it. It was so satisfying for me. So if you are at all interested in the horror publishing boom of the 1980s and you like Christmas horror and little creatures, Secret Santa, it's for you. Next, we have one of the earlier books that I read in 2020, and it managed to stay on my top 10 list all the way throughout the year. So that's really saying something. Here we have The Forgotten Island. This is by David Sodergren. Again, I've already reviewed this. I've done video reviews for most of these books in this video. Uh, so I won't go too in depth. I'll just post the review up there. But this is absolutely bonkers good fun. If you want a nice summery, beachy read that is full of blood and guts and monsters and cosmic terror, The Forgotten Island is brilliant. However, <laughs> if you don't like spiders, just stay away <laughs> because uh, there's spiders. There is spiders. Next, Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Caesar. This was a very, very buzzy book in 2020. Everybody read it. Everybody talked about it. I was very excited for it when I heard about it and I figured this, is, this book is most likely going to be in my top 10, and I was not disappointed. This gave me everything that I was hoping for while also doing something that I was not expecting. I got the bloody slasher that I wanted, but there was also a lot of depth here. This was a tight book with a lot of action, and it makes some great points. So there is Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Caesar. I will link my review up above and down below. And another modern horror book that I read last year, but I don't have a physical copy of because I listened to the audiobook, is Pivot by Elsie Barlow. This was a very interesting cult story. Now, I'm not really interested in cult stories in general, just because I feel like they're overdone at this point, but this did something really fresh and loved it. It's very intense. It takes you into the heart of a cult and you experience it through the eyes of a child who is trained to kill and it ties in a lot of supernatural elements and it becomes something much bigger and much broader. Uh, but the first book, for the most part, is very contained and it really works its way under your skin and gets into the psychology behind everything. It's an awesome book and please don't let the teenage character fool you. This is not a young adult book. It is the darkest thing I read last year and it was definitely disturbing. So 
go in at your own risk. Uh, but I thought it was great. And I also listened to the second book, which is called Parish this year. And I'm going to have a review of that coming up very shortly. But I did do a full video review for Pivot and I will link that below. Sorry, somebody was knocking on the door. I said I was filming a video, but that didn't mean anything. <laughs> uh, next up, we're going to be talking about comic books. I read a couple of them this year and two of them that I very much enjoyed that I kind of coupled together since they're from the same series is the Strange Planet series by Nathan Pyle. These are adorable. Um, I'm sure many of you have probably seen the comic strips online. They're great. Uh, a lot of what you see in these books is what you have seen online, but there are a couple of new things that I didn't see before. These are just so cute and they made me happy in a time when I was not feeling happy at all. So thank you, Nathan Pyle, for publishing these wonderful books. They are a joy. I also read I Will Judge You by Your Bookshelf. This is by Grant Snyder, another very, very cute graphic novel that is dedicated to book nerds. So if you are a book lover, I highly recommend this. I thought it was so good and it made me happy. And another graphic novel that is very, very similar to I Will Judge You by Your Bookshelf is a little book called Book Love. This one I might have liked even more than this, and I definitely want to get a copy. Unfortunately, I don't have one because I checked it out from the library. Book Love is very, very relatable for someone like me who lives and breathes books. I am someone who a lot of people don't get. They don't understand the obsession I have with books. Uh, but this book, Book Love, it gets it. It gets me. I just love this book and I hope the author continues to do more bookish comics in the future. So there you have it. Those are the top 10 books that I read in 2020. I hope all of you had a good reading year as well. Please don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe if you like what you see. Also, please hit the little bell symbol down below next to the subscribe button. That's really important. I've had a lot of people asking me why I'm not posting videos. I am. <laughs> I am posting. Uh, but you have to hit that bell button because YouTube's algorithm sucks. And if you don't hit the bell button, you're not going to get a notification and you might miss when I post. So if you want to see more videos from me, please hit the button. If you don't want to see any videos, it's okay. I'm not trying to pressure you, but I'm just saying it helps to hit the button. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you on the next episode of Library and Macabre. Later, creeps. Thank <laughs> you.